if anyone at home will participate in tonight, uh, tonight's meeting uh, remotely. Pleasure of leaders. United States of America. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have the roll call. Mr. Bahu? Here. Mr. Mormon? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Here. Mr. Hogan? Mr. LeMay? Mr. Narco? Yeah. Mr. Sheen? Yeah. Mr. Gitchin? Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, anybody signed up for a public, uh, public appearance? No. Did you get oh. me for roll call? We got you, Curtis. Thank you. One more. Thank you. Yeah. I think I can do it. No. You need to see Do we have any school committee uh, communications? One more for you. <laughs> I'm going to turn the meeting over to Cam Cole, the student, represent, uh, student representative. Greater Lowell Tech celebrated Say Something Week from March 4th through the 8th. This week celebrates the importance of students and staff working together to recognize warning signs before violence occurs so we can maintain a safe and healthy school community. The Say Something movement is part of the Sandy Hook promise to stop violence in our schools by creating communities of upstanding students and trusted adults. Skills USA cel celebrated Skills USA Week last week with every day devoted to a different aspect of the organization. The highlight of the week was the district competition and the leadership, leadership conference held on Thursday. The conference theme was No Limits to Professionalism at Greater Lowell Tech. Over 190 students participated in technical competitions and another 30 students participated in leadership development workshops. In addition, professionalism activities and events were open to all students during a morning workshop session and an end-of-the-day professionalism fun fair. Best of all, Greater Lowell claimed 54 medals in 26 events and 44 technical competitors qualified for the state competition in April. We also swept the competition in carpentry, welding, web design, additive manufacturing, and painting and design technology. SkillsUSA would like to thank everyone who participated in our Double Good Popcorn fundraiser. In just four days, our members sold over $18,000 worth of popcorn. From this, $9,000 will support events like our Career Readiness Fun Fair. Another $2,500 will support the Double Good Foundation for Kids with Disabilities. And $500 will be provided a year's worth of school supplies and essentials for an orphan at the Be Like Brit Foundation in Haiti. March is Read Across America Month, and our library is excited to celebrate. Last year, the GL Tech community read 7,403 books from September through June. This year, from September through February, we've read 5,446 books. And we still have four months of school left. We were well on our way to breaking our record. As part of our celebration on March 5th, the Library and Media Center held a book launch for the local poet, Anthony Febo, with students receiving signed copies of his book, Becoming an Island, on March 13th. Public librarians from Drake, Dunstable, Lowell, and Tingsboro signed students up for public library cards to continue our community partnerships and dedication to lifelong reading and learning. Thank you to everyone for all the resources and support you provide to our students and school committee. School committee. The Student Council has been busy hosting events to enhance our student experience with fun events on Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day. In addition, members also helped promote National No One Eats Alone Day to help end <coughs> social isolation during school lunch and Say Something Week activities. The Educators Rising Club attended UMass Lowell for their annual Educators Rising Conference and competition. Students mingled with other future teachers and attended breakout sessions on different educational topics. In addition, our students came in first place in the Children's Literature Competition first place winner in the Teacher Created Materials competition, and second place in the Interactive Teacher Bulletin Board competition. For the second year in a row, our club students have qualified for nationals, which will be held in Washington, D.C. this summer. Math Club has been preparing for the Math 24 competition on Tuesday, March 19th. They expect to see close to 100 students and dozens of teachers in attendance. In addition, Table Talk once again donated 480 pies for students to enjoy on Pie Day, March 14th, as they engaged in pie-related fun. Art Club has been invited to participate in the Congressional Art Contest for the Office of Lori Trahan. Greater Lowell teachers will jury the entries for submission to ensure quality. Students are also producing flyers for a solar eclipse viewing event at the school. Bio Club has been preparing for Spring in the Greenhouse. They started planting sunflowers, tomatoes, and squash for the school garden and to take some home. 
They are also looking forward to celebrating Earth Day in April by cleaning school grounds while enjoying warm weather in the next few weeks. Both the boys and girls basketball teams had great moments during their respective seasons, with each returning over 90% of their rosters. Both programs look to be in strong position for next season. Our, com our competition dance team fielded another strong squad in year three of the program. Griffin dancers recently competed in the MSA MSSAA state competition. The Greater Lowell, slash Greater Lowell Neshoba Tech, Greater Lower Lawrence ice hockey team had a very successful season, <coughs> qualifying for the MIAA tournament for the second straight season. Griffin Indoor Track had another banner year. The girls and boys teams captured both the regular season and league meet titles. Several team members also qualified for MIAA state, all state, and New England competitions. The swim and dive team had another tremendous run of success, with several team members finishing among the top place winners in the CAC league competition. Our Griffin Cheer team continued to build on their successful fall campaign, capturing both the state, vocational, and CAC league titles. The Lady Griffins also took second at both the Division I regional state competitions before departing for the NCA Nationals in Florida, where they placed third in their division. Griffin Wrestling once again tackled the toughest season schedule of any program around. The results were as usual outstanding, with a number of place winners at the MIAA regional and state meets. Senior Gabe Stickney was crowned Division I state champion, as well as junior Lily Normandy. Lily is the first Griffin wrestler to capture a state title in the MIAA girls division. Freshman Antoine Jackman was the D1 sectional champion and placed second at states. All three, along with senior Garrett Aya, also qualified for the New England Championships in Providence, Rhode Island. Thank you. Cameron, thank, thank, thank you. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to approve the minutes from February 15th. So moved. No move. Second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Yeah. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. A motion to approve the minutes from the February 29th Special School Committee meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Aye. See how easy that is? Really rocky. Uh, for Pressure's <laughs> on. See how easy that is? <laughs> uh, do I have a motion to waive the reading of the warrant? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anybody Aye. opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Do I have a motion to approve the expenditure of six million one hundred thirty-three thousand one hundred fifty-five dollars and thirteen cents? Second. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Motion Aye. carries. A report of the general counsel. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Superintendent Davis for a report. Thank you. The first item on my agenda this evening is That's I'm happy to do. inform the committee that Greater Lowell has been awarded a classroom enhancement grant from the Collision Repair Education Foundation in the amount of $3,000. These funds will be used by the automotive collision students uh, to provide tools, equipment, and supplies needed. The next item on my agenda is to inform the committee that Greater Lowell Technical High School has been awarded the 2024 uh, New England Marsha Paul Education Grant in the amount of $2,480. These funds will be used uh, for students in the Information Technology Services Program towards robotics. Uh, the next on my item on my agenda is like I'd like to inform the committee that the day on the hill is scheduled for Monday, May 6th, 2024 at the State House in Boston. This is a lobbying day for school superintendents and school committee members across the state. Uh, our culinary instructors have already attended a pre-planning meeting a few weeks ago and will once again be volunteering to assist with lunch on that day. So, uh, if anyone would like to attend, uh, you can communicate with me and we can uh, talk about uh, making a trip down to Day on the Hill. The next item on my agenda is the Cooperative Education Report. 
The report uh, you were provided in your packets indicates that 228 senior students are currently on co-op, which is 42% of the class of 2024 based, uh, based uh, on the results of the end of February. However, to do, to, uh, however, <laughs> to date, uh, I'm happy to say that we have 231 senior students out on co-op, which is 42% of the class of 2024. And currently, we have 59 junior students out on cooperative education, which is 10% of the class of 2025. Uh, so a copy of the report is in your packet. And again, uh, thanking Stacy and Brian Jones for the work they do to uh, ensure that our students are going out on co-op. The next item on my agenda is two uh, approvals for two separate donations. The first donation is uh, a refurbished and fully functional strikers stretcher from Dr. Romanowski's office. This donation has an estimated value of $2,500. Due to the lack of space in the office, Dr. Romanowski would like to donate this item to our health assisting department. Uh, so I'd be looking for approval on this donation. Do have a motion to accept the donation from Dr. Romanowski of our stretcher. Second. <clears throat> now we'll let like old school here. So we use it for the meeting? Mr. Vado? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Most people say that. Mr. Yeah. Mr. LeMay? <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Nako? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. It's very vintage. The second, uh, I, the second donation is a 2014 Ford Focus from a Ford Motor Company. This donation has an estimated value of $8,000 and will be used for educational training purposes only by our automotive technology program students. The vehicle was donated to Greater Lowell because uh, the automotive technology program participates extensively with a Ford online program for industry certifications through Ford. Ford Motor Company from grades 10 through 12, and we have one of the highest usages of the program in New England. So they donated the car to us, so we appreciate this donation, and I am looking for approval. Do you have a motion to accept the 2014 oh, oh. Ford Focus? Second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. The next item on my agenda is I'll be seeking approval for the Title I facilitator, Ms. Cheryl Bommel, to travel out of state to attend the Haas Technical Education Conference on April 26th in Danielson, Connecticut, at no cost to the district. The conference <coughs> focuses on building successful CNC training programs, and Cheryl is working very close, closely with Mass Hire and the Commonwealth Corporation in providing adult training during the evening and would like to attend this professional development. Getting a motion to Looking accept the out of state approval. travel? So moved. Second. Mr. Babu? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. And uh, lastly, I'd like to invite our Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, Mr. Greg Haas, to join us to provide information regarding the 2024 <coughs> Student Opportunity Act. And I will also be asking for your approval after Mr. Haas's presentation. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, so this first slide is just a kind of a brief overview. Um, so we are actually in our second round of the Student Opportunity Act. Um, the law was enacted in 2019, and um, it makes some adjustments to how um, the funding structure in Massachusetts is, is set. Um, we're not necessarily getting a lot more money, um, but it kind of puts some strings that are now attached to it where we need to um, identify some student groups that need the most help and ensure that the funds are being used to support those student groups. 
In terms of our plan development, there was a couple different approaches. Um, two big pieces were kind of the collection of the data. The first was um, looking at a lot of data. So there was state provided data, um, student outcome comparison tool, MCAS data, um, school climate data. And we also used a lot of in-house data. So midterm, final exams, course scores, um, and then a lot of like formative you know, assessment data that is done in the department level. Um, through that initial data look, we identified some of the student groups that the state um, listen, these are the kind of their terminology, so our multilingual learners, uh, that's the new terminology that the state is using to replace English language learners. So it went from English language learners to English learners, and now it's MLL. Um, students with disabilities, low-income students, uh, our African-American black population had some dis um, disparities in last year's data, as well as our Hispanic and Latino student population. Another big element of the Student Opportunity Act Plan development for 2024 is that we needed to engage families and stakeholders to get their insight into um, the direction that we need to take in terms of supporting these student groups. Um, so to do that, we surveyed students, we surveyed parents, staff, and we were to break that down by academic, technical, non-instructional. Um, this also went out to our co-op employers, some of our advisory board members, to make sure that we were getting the full gambit of feedback from the community. Um, and then we also did in-house data-driven protocols in the different departments. And then from there, we were required um, per the plan to identify focus areas and then select from a bank of um, evidence-based programs that the department gave us as an option. And this is the plan that we've developed and the funding that goes along with it. Um, so for our 2024 SOA plan, there's going to be kind of three prongs. Um, this focus, number one, is related to social-emotional learning. Um, so you can kind of see in the budget category, and this isn't um, additional funds beyond what's in the budget. So this is, you know, you know Mike will continue with this. So um, within this first SEL topic, we're going to be providing additional professional development. I do want to note that these funding um, is over the course of three years. So it'll be next year's and then the two subsequent years from that. So we'll be doing additional um, professional development in social emotional learning. We'll be adding some additional positions to support that. Um, that will be the um, school adjustment counselor in the RISE program up in the school counseling department. We'll also add one to the main office. And then we'll be expanding our contract with Cartwheel, which provides uh, mental health services to students. So our goal is that those efforts will um, pan out and see some results in terms of supporting those student groups. Uh, the second category or the second focus area really ro revolves around family engagement and strengthening that school to home connection. Um, so with this, we'll be providing some professional development to teachers in strengthening two-way communication. We have a handful of staff that will be going to the Harvard Family Engagement Institute in July. Um, and then we'll also be establishing a family resource center. Um, so there's you know, some nominal construction cost in there. Um, and then we'll be adding a parent liaison. So that will bring um, up, up to three parent liaisons and they'll all be housed in that family um, liaison center. And then we'll be doing some additional nights after school, um, really highlighting our technical programs and you know, bringing together parents and students and teachers um, throughout the year to highlight what they're doing in their efforts. Our last of the three focus areas is really around teaching and learning. Um, it's definitely the biggest in terms of uh, funding. A lot of um, this category is looking for supporting those specific student groups. Uh, we started last year with the support of the committee, expanding um, some of the teaching positions that we had. We've seen results that have been really strong and positive with the co-teaching model, so we'll be expanding that. Um, increasing kind of the strategies and the support with students with disabilities as well as MLL students. Um, we've had now, this is two years of, of really good success with our project-based learning initiative, so we'll be continuing that into the following year, uh, providing, I think we have 65 teachers signed up right now to do a three-day institute this summer. Um, we'll be implementing the state seal of biliteracy, which highlights the multilingualism of our students, um, and with that, providing some SEI professional development to teachers to support our multilingual, multilingual learners. And then lastly, um, we'll be adding an instructional coach who will teach um, some MLL sections, but they'll also be responsible for supporting teachers with modifying their curriculum and making sure that it's accessible for MLLs. Um, and then instructional tutors will be added into the science department. We've been very fortunate to have those positions in math and English, and they've um, obviously yielded results, as you've seen on MCAS, and the hope is with biology being the next one that we want to move, that the tutors will help with that. Um, so those three focus areas combined, it's just a little bit over 2.1 million, um, and that's the SOA funding and then some of the other funding that we are willing to commit to make sure that we are able to hit these three focus areas.
Um, and then with that, it's we've got our <laughs> um, lowest our lowest performing group. We are required to meet um, Desi's three years targets. That's part of the SOA plan, and so that will be in English and math in achievement and growth. And then we do need to me uh, measure the evidence-based programs in the other three areas, and that'll be submitted annually to DESE. Are there any questions on the SOA plan? No. Anybody? No. I just know it seems like we're going in the right direction with the MCAS score taking that jump, and it looks like we're closing that gap with the SOA. So congratulations. And then we're doing a great job, the superintendent, right down to the classrooms. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you just look at that jump the last from the last three years. It's unreal. I, I, obviously, hopefully it's sustainable. Yes. Um, but let's be I'm realistic. So, um, I, I believe it's a great job. I guess I have one question. One yes. comment. Uh, as far as the three-year plan goes, does the state sort of watch us annually and then we sort of submit some type of um, paperwork yeah. to let them know that we're progressing? Yep. So they'll open up um, in GEMS. I'm assuming portal, it'll be in GEMS right. again. They're great management. We'll, we'll have to every year say where we are in terms of meeting those goals. So within the plan itself, there's annual benchmarks and target elements that we're going to be looking at, and we'll have to show where we are with those. And those were targets set by the state? Correct. Okay, and if we don't meet those targets, it's just sort of they sort of... Just continue to improve. And you, they just say, okay, correct. keep an eye on this. Yep. Great. Thank you. Great. Anybody else? Thanks, Greg. Great. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the 2024 SOA plan? So moved. Second? Second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yep. Mr. Naco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. Do the report of the business manager? Hi, <clears throat> Mike. It's fairly for me. Good evening. Um, so before the uh, regular school committee meeting, we did hold our public hearing on the FY25 budget. Um, so um, now we will be looking to uh, get a vote of approval for the School committee or the presented budget has a total of fifty-seven million nine hundred eighty-one thousand four hundred eighty dollars. Do you have a motion to approve the FY twenty-five budget? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Bahu. Yes. Mr. Morin. Yes. Mr. Richardson. Yes. Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Lemay. Yes. Mr. Narco. Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. All right, next item on my agenda is a list of transfers I've prepared. Um, it's got a total of $1,060,894. Uh, a lot of these were just account cleanup as we've been going through the year, um, balancing things out where we've moved expenditures to, and then um, making sure that all the money's in the right spots. Do have a motion to approve the budget transfers? Motion. Second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. All right, and my next item is uh, an update or an update and a vote on the food service management contracting uh, company. So we've had Aramark here at Greater Lowell Technical High School for I believe it's over 25 years at this point. Um, and we went out to bid this year. The state uh, changed the bid process or the proposal process on food service management. So it was all done through the Department of Ed, um, through the food service management. Um, and they set, you know, a lot of the template for how we go out to bid was changed and set by the state in order to align with federal requirements. Um, so in that process, we had, um, we put out the, the bid and we had made some adjustments to make sure that the program that we received matched what we get offered here at Greater Wall Tech on an uh, everyday basis. And we had uh, about five food service management companies reach out and ask for copies of this proposal. Um, and we had two companies come to our pre-bid walkthrough, Chartwells and Aramark. <clears throat> Proposals were due March 6th, and then uh, myself, Jill Davis, and Michael Barton reviewed the proposals on the merits of uh, how they would conduct food service without looking at pricing. 
Um, so we looked at, there were benchmarks that we set for wanting participation out of our students, the number of years of experience, financial stability of the company providing, uh, the type of menu that they offered, the way that they offered that menu, how many items they can get across the line a day, how many different options they can offer for every all the students, um, and came back to find that based on the threshold set, the proposal received from uh, Aramark was rated as highly advantageous, uh, and the proposal received from Chartwells was uh, rated as advantageous. <clears throat> Under the new state process, you only open the costing of highly advantageous proposals that have come across. Um, so when we went back through, um, I opened the financials on this. Uh, Aramark is providing a program that looks like it'll achieve um, greater um, participation amongst our students and also offer a net profit of operating the, prov the program of about $398,000 annually. <clears throat> um, that funding is solely for food service, um, so we're going to have to look at you know what we can do to make the lives of students better here at Greater Lowell Tech through the food service department, uh, what types of th offerings we might be able to change or upgrade and those types of things with that type of money coming in, um, but that's where their proposal was based. Um, so based on having a highly advantageous proposal that seems to meet all of the needs of Greater Lowell Technical High School students um, and offering a very advantageous financial proposal, um, seeking a motion to award the food service management contract to Aramark. Um, I'll, I'll preface that this is a, a single year contract with four extension years onto it, uh, just another uh, federal requirement of the USDA programs. <clears throat> Do have a motion to accept the food management contract to Aramac? Motion to accept Aramac. Motion to approve. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. yes. All right, that is it for tonight. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any old business? Okay, and a new business. Uh, First, I'd like to thank everybody for allowing me to be the committee chairman. Uh, this is my last meeting as a chair. Um, that being said, I want to thank everybody, Colette, Jill, uh, everybody in the building. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was uh, my pleasure. So now it's time to uh, for the annual realization of the committee and election of offices take effect uh, April 1st, 2024. So the naming of the new chair was not will not be a joke. It's really happening on April 1st. So we have a motion to nominate the chair. I would like to nominate the top vote getter in the area, <laughs> Mr. Sheehan, to be chair of how, Great Law Texas. How America. apropos of being April yeah. 1st. I'll second yeah. that. Second. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> have anybody else? Anybody else? Hearing none? Hearing none? Matt, congratulations. Thank you, Chairman. Congratulations, Matt. Yes, uh, no one ran against him, but yes. Okay. I'll be at the parade. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, Matt. Thank you. Do we have any motions to nominate a vice chair? Nominate Paul Morin for yes. vice chair. Like oh. Second. Curtis, second. Do we have anybody else nominated for vice chair? Anybody else? Hearing none. Congratulations, Mr. Vice Chair. Are there any motions to nominate the secretary? Nominate Steve, you'll second? Do we have anybody else? Did he say Curtis? He yeah. seconds. Do we have anybody else? Thank you. Yes, secretary. Any other nominations? Curtis, congratulations on being named secretary. Congratulations, oh, Curtis. Thank you. Do we have any uh, committee person motion? Mr. Chair, back up one. Back again, sorry. It's not really new business. Just wanted to let you, everybody know the class of 2024 signs have been designed by the kids. They've been made and they're available through the PTO. If anybody wants one. Cool. Beautiful. Do we have any, uh, any committee person motions? Reports of uh, subcommittees are going to need a motion to approve the minutes from February 15th finance subcommittee meeting. Do you have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? 
Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchie? Yes. Uh, we have to go into executive session, so I need a motion to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Law C30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on bargaining or litigation position of the public body. And the chair so declares greater low, uh, the Greater Little Regional Teachers Association. So, can I get a motion to a sec executive motion. session? Second. Motion. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheen? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Now, FB? Freddie, we're going to document the date and time you hesitated on your yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Because in the near future, we're going to call this moment back, back up. I look forward Do to I have that a motion day, to adjourn, Chairman. please? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes. Do I have a second? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bahu? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks guys. Good night.